found out that uh, Jan, uh, brother Daniel, our son-in-law's first cousin, he was in the wedding and everything. His truck was giving him trouble and he was traveling and pulled his truck over to the side of the road and got hit and got drugged. Oh. And uh, now they can't find the truck. Uh, there's things that we need to pray for. He's going through emergency surgery. It's in ICU and we don't know if there's more surgeries coming, but Let's please pray for him. They don't know the Lord. And his dad, who has not necessarily an agnostic, but not been real warm, uh, even posted on his post, please, everyone, please pray. They really realize they need a miracle. Yeah. And then our niece, uh, Debbie, my daughter, her, uh, uh, my sister, her daughter-in-law uh, had a head-on collision oh. and broke her leg and arm and foot, and they're having to do some reconstruction, and she's already had one surgery and another one coming <coughs> tomorrow, and uh, they don't know just how serious it is, but let's pray for her. She's in the hospital, and um, then uh, uh, Sister Cindy, we need to pray for her, pray for, continue to pray for Sister uh, Tanya and Brother Nick, and his procedure is coming up real soon, and since Pauline called, she's not feeling well at all. She actually called my wife last night and said she just really needed prayer, wasn't feeling good, and then again this morning. And let's hold her up in prayer. She's usually here 30 minutes, minute, an hour earlier. Uh, you know, when Sister Mary is uh, just not doing good, having to do some treatments and stuff, upper respiratory infection going on, and let's hold her up in prayer. Amen. Amen. All right. Others have needs today. Amen. God sees all these hands. Amen. Let's hold our church up and trust God for revival. And I ask you to really, every time you pray, please pray. Paul said pray for me, for the work of ministry and the churches and everything. But I ask you, if I know our church is small, please hold me up in prayer that God would give me the wisdom and guidance to, to be uh, meek and humble and let God work and and uh, never get in the flesh but be led by the Spirit of God at all times. Amen. 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 All right. If the blind lead the blind, we're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. We're in trouble. We need Amen. God's help. And, and I don't want to be blind and I don't want to be a hireling. I want to be faithful to yes. God. Amen. 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 All right. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you're on your way to heaven today? Yes. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't we stand? Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Let's start out, please, by just thanking Him and praising Him for what He's doing. He does all things well. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we just love you today. God, we thank you. We praise you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, we stand in need of your touch today, Lord. Oh, we praise you. 
page 
rush throne, Lord, we shout and sing. Just over in the glory land. Glad you sent us to Christ the Lord and King. Just over in the glory land. Hallelujah. It's going to be a glad day, a wonderful day. When we get to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't we take a minute and let's just go out while they play something. Continue to play it in that key. And let's just love the Lord and just women. Hug and welcome the women and let each other know you love each other in the Lord. Men hug the men and women hug the women. Amen. God bless you. Let's fellowship the Lord.
So if it's giving to the Lord, we have been talking to someone, uh, Kendall, our uh, uh, cousin uh, by marriage, and he said, because I think I explained to some of you, because this is the renewal year, amen, and we pay quarterly, they went up $1,100 this, this year. And uh, I talked to other people, and it's not us. They're not just isolating us. Right. They're scared to death. They know something is about to happen. Yeah. And they're just coming to race because they can. And but Kendall said, because that this is our annual premium, and they've already got it, basically, uh, he said, we've got to might as well just let them. They're going to deduct 25%. Even if we were canceled today, they would keep out that 25%. And he said, no sense in letting them do that. Let's look at it again in about November. But let's just pray and trust the Lord to give us favor with somebody. Yes, and uh, let them realize that God can keep us. But we are required, amen, to keep insurance. And it's very, very pertinent for us to keep insurance. Yes. We've got uh, uh, visions and things of things we're going to do. We're planning on getting a cement boundary right there by the front doors all the way across, going out about three or four feet just with a gradual slope where we can move that sign. That way anybody with wheelchairs or whatever can get up in the church and it will be such a gradual taper, it won't be as dangerous. And we're looking at getting that done. I'm going to contact Brother Steve, Lord willing, uh, Bernard, and see if he'll do it. I'm sure he will. Sorry, another, but he's, he's a master craftsman yeah. in that area they conquered. And uh, so just thank you for praying for every area for our church. Amen. God, hear us so and help us to be the lighthouse that he'll have us to be. Amen. Harvest time. You know what that means? You know what harvest is? Yes. Harvest is to bring in the sheep. Yes. Amen. You've labored, you've toiled, you've prepared the land, you've sown the seed, and then you've Praying for God to send rain and God to work and move in hearts and lives. And then harvest comes. Yes. Amen. And thank God for the harvest. We need the harvest yes. of our Amen. friends and loved ones. Amen. 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 All right. Yes, Father, we thank you for this day, this glorious day you've given us to bow down at the feet of our Lord and say you through this Christ we love you and hear you today, Lord. And also thank you that we all receive and we all the light of your and then here's harvest time. The workers are few, Lord. So we have to be blessed today and given. For the cheerful heart today, Lord, has given unto the kingdom of God. And this we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.
soul. I'm going to go to the place for it. And that's the reason why I don't feel the soul.
got your Bible, turn with me if you will to St. John chapter 10. St. John chapter 10. that I have 
made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 8. Aren't you glad that somebody can find grace in the eyes of the Lord? And aren't you glad that we can be warned and be aware that evil was continually upon the minds of men and women in the earth? It's not only you that, that fight bad thoughts. It's not only you, amen, that if left alone and left to yourself with self-destruct and do damage and detriment, the imagination, yes. amen, of our thoughts of our heart are wicked. Amen. We need to realize that, that the enemy seeks to attack us and destroy us through our mind. We live in a fallen world and we need to realize that. But we look around at the word there that God's being used. And that word is talking about, it comes from the word that means to wrap up. Amen. As if wrapping in a napkin, our fruit and our gift. Amen. And we wrap it in a napkin and we put it in the earth and we protect it. Amen. But that's not what God is looking for. Amen. God is looking for us to wrap ourselves up in the love of God. Amen. Wrap ourselves up in the nature of God, in the wisdom and will of God. That His will would be accomplished and not our will. Amen? Amen. Why? Because we are living in a fallen world. Right. And many Christians think that they can serve God just by doing good works. Good works is not always just me going about helping the sick and the, the widow and the elderly and the, those that are not able to help themselves. Good works are, are, are uh, thought upon by many people of uh, I'll do what I think is good as long as I think it's okay. And that goes down. When you boil it all down, it gets down to it's my life. I'll live it the way I want. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm minding my own business. I'm not robbing or stealing or killing. But I can do what I will with mine. And we can do what we will with ours as long as we realize that really and truly it's not ours. But it's the Lord. Amen. It's the Lord that keeps the city. It's the Lord that helps the watchman. Amen. Not to just wait in vain. It's the Lord. And if we would just be endeavoring to be led by the Spirit of God, God will use us however He sees needs to be used. Amen? But we need to take the thoughts that we got and we need to always be carrying them and comparing them to the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And if we see in any of us anything in our mind, our will, and our emotions, anything that, that is just having a desire to stay busy for God, Without fellowship with God, we need to realize that that is not going to bring about the fruit of faithfulness to God. Amen? We've got to be led by the Spirit of God. We've got to be trusting Him. We've got to realize that we are in a fight. And that fight is not for flesh and blood. That fight is for the truth and righteousness. We've got to be led by the Spirit of God and be pleasing to the Lord. And be being what God would have us to be. Amen. It was as though people had become incapable of hearing the word of God. I've got a scripture that I copied down here and pasted it this morning. And uh, needless to say, it's not here now. It was here 50 minutes ago. You said, Pastor, you're losing your mind. I'm not losing my mind. I'm trying to tell you. I copied, I'm a good copier and pastor. <laughs> I've done it thousands of times, not hundreds. I'm, I'm too slow to take and write out all these scriptures. I can take and go to East Ford and I can look them up, and which I always have to do if I'm running reference or I'm running uh, treasure scripture knowledge or whatever, seeing what the Word of God is referring to there. I look them up. So if any of you got any ideas or what I can do to fix this thing, not everything that's going wrong is me. I take full, full credit. For the things that's done right, they're few and far between, and I can do none of it except for God. Amen. But I don't want you to know what to do with the foolishness. But I do realize today that I wrote this down here for a purpose, and that purpose is that we might be led by the Spirit of God. We can let ourselves do nothing, and our works don't amount to a whole lot. But we can decide and figure out what is best, what we think is best for the Lord. But that's not necessarily what is best. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. Matthew 13, 13. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they see, see not, and hearing, hear not, neither do they understand. 
thirst for water, but a famine, a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. A famine of hearing what thus saith the Lord. A famine of hearing what God is trying to send our way to warn us and to love us and lead us and guide us. And God does give us warning. Here's that scripture that I thought somebody took away. Amen. It says Proverbs 1 and 22. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. 23 says, Turn ye in my reproof. Behold, I will pour out of my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. And ye have said it no all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. What is he saying? Do you realize how somber these words are? Do you realize what God is trying to warn us with today? He's trying to warn us to oh, give ear and hear what God is saying. Amen. Have us to see what God is trying to show us today and be led by the Spirit of God. Why? Because we are in a fight. We are in a battle. Amen. There's a warfare and it's struggling. Hey, Isaiah 40, 30, and 31 says, Even your youth shall faint and be weary, and your young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. What are you saying? Pastor, I'm trying to tell you today that God says beware lest your ears are dull of hearing. Beware of lest you're walking in your own way thinking that everything's going to be okay. And you're assuming, assuming that you're doing it right and pleasing the Lord in every area. But you're not really being hungry and sensitive as you may need to be for God to speak. While Satan is attacking all the while, there's not a one of us here today, hardly, that don't know somebody that is physically, spiritually, emotionally in some major trouble. And yet we oftentimes do not carry the burden for others that we want people to carry for us when we're in trouble. When we, I'm telling you, say, well, I prayed and it seemed like God's not listening to my prayer. I prayed and it seemed like nothing's happening. Well, we need to examine, Lord, are we praying according to your will? God, are we praying according to your word? Are we praying according to your good pleasure or just wanting our life to be a little easier to live down here? In the, well, the people to just be a little easier to put up with. We want God's best. I remember <clears throat> one time I preached this message in Montrose. And the only time that I think I preached it, but I preached that, that God will laugh at your calamity. I preached and the title of the message was Cisterns, Broken Cisterns. We were running a small church. We were probably running in the 30s or 40s at that time. And we had built it up from just about nothing. And God, we had a good, pretty tight church and a good group. And I didn't know of anybody in the church that needed such a message as God was giving me. I really didn't. I had no idea. But we had one Sunday school teacher that was precious. She was a tender. She was like me. She was kind of a crybaby. Her name was Sister Jody. And Sister Jody was a jewel of a lady, in my opinion. I mean, brother, she was top of the line. And she had a son and a daughter and a husband. And, and uh, we had a youth camp. And her, her husband and son and daughter went to the youth camp. And I was the youth leader there. And we had just a glorious, glorious move of God in the youth camp. And there was shouting and speaking in tongues and people being slain in the spirit. And it was a move of God such as we had not even seen in our church in months and months. Amen. But yet it was a good move of God. But the next Sunday, I preached this message. Sisters, broken sisters, my people have hewn them out 
cisterns that will hold no water. And I thought, God, what is this all about? <clears throat> but yet I was obedient. And immediately, I never even noticed Sister Jody in any way. When I was preaching the message, my mind didn't go to her, nothing. I was just preaching to the crowd. I mean, looking every man that I could in the eye, every woman that I could in the eye, trying to please God, not trying to figure it out, just trying to be obedient. And she came up to me after church, and she was crying and said, Pastor, my husband told me that if that is what your church believes, I'll never go with you to that church. And she said, I have to turn in and give my resignation and turn in my Sunday school material and everything today. And I said, oh, Sister Judy, Sister Jody, don't do that. Let's pray. Let's seek God. Whatever. You know what I mean? And let's go visit him. What if she said, no, I feel like I need to do that. And there was no change in her mind. Within one month, her husband left her for somebody else. The last I heard, her kids, her son and daughter, which were precious, precious. I'm not sure that they were all Holy Ghost filled, Pentecostal, the way they needed to be. But they loved God. They were tender to the preaching of the Word. And we didn't have children's church. Whenever we preached, the young and the old stayed in there unless they got louder than I was. And then they took them to the nursery until they could get composure. And uh, But I want you to know the last I heard, they were not serving God. And I prayed for Sister Jody dozens of times over the years. Not prayed for God to be mean or harsh or judgmental to her, but prayed for God to be merciful to her. To God, for God to let her to be tender by the Spirit of God. Not to be bitter or hurt at God. Not to blame herself. Just fall on the altar and let God give her what she needs to be. Have repentance in her heart and have the joy of the Lord. And let God help her to live a faithful life after that. But I'm telling you, the devil wants to put fear in you. The devil wants to put fear in me. The devil wants to, to get us to go to the right or to the left or follow amen, the will of the flesh instead of the will of God and His direction. The devil wants to lead us astray by our own thoughts and our own what we think to be the will of God. And it'd be a million miles away possibly from the will of God. You say, well, God would never do that to me. I love it too much. God would never do that to me. You do not know what God is going to allow to come your way. Amen. You need to realize that you're fighting for your soul. Amen. God has already paid the price. Now all we got to do is be obedient to God and try to follow His will through His Word and yieldedness. God's wrath comes upon the children that are unrighteous and living in unrighteousness. In Romans 1.18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What do we say toward that? We say, well, bless God, they've been warned, and they're guilty, and let God deal with them. No, we say, God, in your wrath, remember mercy. God be tender toward them. God, please have a fire, have a place of compassion in you that you can bestow upon them, that they can cry out to you in love and in mercy, begging you, amen, to help them to be weak where they've been strong and strong where they've been weak, that your will may be accomplished in them. Yes, Lord. Amen. We don't need a man to go into sodomy or homosexuality or sin in any way, but if they do, we want to hate the sin, but yes, love the sin. Because except for the grace of God, there go some of us. What the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, verse 20, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. Here's what we got to look out for. But became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. And professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. God help us. God help us. 
that changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. They changed the truth of God into a lie. Amen. And God gave them up unto vile affections. God gave them up unto vile affections. Now, does that mean we not need to go against God? And if we know of anybody, be they family, neighbor, friend, or foe, that falls into that situation, we need to just let God give them vile affections without us rendering a prayer. No, brother, we need to beg God that he would be merciful. Even as he changed his mind toward Hezekiah, he was about to wipe him out. Amen. The prophet had just come to visit him and told him to set his house in order. I'm about to take you home. And brother Nehemiah, or Hezekiah, turned his face to the wall and began to pray. Amen. And God tapped the prophet on the shoulder and told Isaiah, believe he was to go back. Tell him I've added 15 years to his life. God hears and answers prayers. But well, we got to be careful. And even as they did not like to retain God. In their knowledge. Do you like to retain God in your knowledge? Or do you say, I don't care. Let God turn me over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication and wickedness and covetousness and maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, no, who knoweth the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do they the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. We need to be sensitive and realize that God is going to rain judgment upon this world. And God says judgment's first going to begin at the house of God. God, give us ears to hear what your spirit would say to us, not just what ideas that we concoct in our mind. You say, well, I don't need anybody telling me what to do or how to live or whatever. I'm telling you. Nobody's trying to tell you what to do or how to live or whatever, but we are trying to be a herald, one that, that broadcasts the truth, one that shares and one that warns of the possibility that can be done if we follow the flesh instead of following the Spirit of God. We think we can do it ourselves, our way, and turn out okay, but that's only, you know, The young man that was hit and drugged and is undergoing emergency, sur emergency surgery this morning. And they don't know from minute to minute what's going to be next. It's been two hours, two and a half hours since we heard something drastic could have happened since then. Good or bad. That's right. But that young man, like us, is at God's mercy. Amen. We are in God's mercy. Yes. And we need to pray for God to have his way in our heart and life. Yes. We need to pray that God will help us to be warned, to help us to have a heart that yearns after righteousness and yearns after God. Amen. We don't need to trust our own figuring things out. Amen. It's yes. not my way, but God's way that I need to be concerned about. Amen. Daniel chapter 5, the impious feast there. Amen. He was faithful to seek the Lord, but he only was faithful to seek the Lord until he got to a certain stature in his own mind and thinking. And then he thought, look at all this that I have done. And then it took something to get his attention that was scary to most godly men that have ever read in the Word of God. There become a thing. He was given a great feast to a thousand of his lords. And they were drinking out of the vessels that they had drank the sacraments out of in the temple. And he had taken these holy things of God and used them for vanity and for pride and for idolatry, if you will. And 
They were in a drunken stupor and having the party and time of their life. And there came forth the finger of a man's hand writing on the wall. You know the story. Many, many, if you kill your Pharisee, this day have thou been found in the balances, weighed in the balances, and found wanting. In other words, he's about to meet his maker that day. Why? Because his heart was lifted up in pride. Why? Because he thought he could handle it by doing it his way. And he could be okay and he could know how far to push the boundaries. But just today, we've heard a testimony and a report of how God is beginning to work in the lives of some of those that we prayed for for months and months and months and seemingly not getting anywhere. But just today, we've heard a testimony that God is beginning to work. Amen. They can tell there's things happening. Spiritually, God is beginning to stir. God is beginning to need that heart and that mind. Beginning to look as though he's awakening the spirit, amen, and work. And if you and I will continue to cry out to God in behalf of ourselves, in behalf of our loved ones, our family members, our children, our neighbors, our 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 those aged ones that are that have never really had time for God, God can save them. Amen. In Psalm chapter 15. Says the Son of David, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. I'm asking you today, are you speaking the truth in your heart? Are you being guilty of backbiting? Oh, you may not be doing it with your lips, but you may be doing it with your heart. You may be grudging toward others with your heart. You know, be willing and be open to the Holy Ghost yeah. tagging you out. Right. Amen. If that's the case. I want you to know you're not above reproach. That's true. God chastens those that he loves yeah. and cares for. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I know you think, Pastor, you use some of the same scriptures over and over and over again. Forgive me, I'm not trying to be redundant. But I just want you to know we cannot trust ourselves. Amen. 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 For the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Yes. And bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience Amen. when your obedience is fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Why do we need to be reminded of this? Well, because I remember a few years ago, January, maybe January the 26th or whenever it was, January was... Uh, back to life month and, and we would pray against abortion and we would focus on the family and different radio stations would, would admonish the church to cry out to God to save lives in America and, and reprove, rebuke Amen. Those that were kid committing such vile, vile uh, uh, crimes against God and against humanity but it seems like we stopped praying and we don't realize how God answered our prayer and how God has intervened and ministered. But the devil is still trying to work. But thank God 2 Chronicles 7, 14 still says that my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. You and I need to examine ourselves and cry out to God. For mercy. Cry out to God. Get God, give me a repentant heart in the areas that I'm guilty and in the areas that there's sin in my life. And help me to come clean with you. Amen. Yes. Help me to be what I need to be, to be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in me for the Lord's use. Amen. Amen. There's a thief that's trying to steal, <coughs> kill, and destroy. And I'm telling you, God will put an hedge about us 
if we'll look to him and we'll cry out to him and trust him to help us. Amen? Amen. But we got to lean not to our own understanding. We've got to be obedient and yielded to the Lord and yeah. to the Word of God, believing that God is going to use us. Sure, sometimes He uses us in spite of us. Yes. But I'm telling you how much more God can use us if we are yielding to Him actively the way He's desiring for us to. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not wrestling against one another. We're not wrestling against man that you can see. The Bible says we're wrestling against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the devil's work. If one of God's angels can kill 186,000 soldiers in one night, we don't want to be wrestling with angels in the flesh. We want to be going to God and asking God to do our wrestling for us. And us fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And be sensitive to what God's ready to do. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I love and I appreciate you. And I want you to know God has blessed us and God has helped us. But how many times do we go and we take for granted? We take for granted the conveniences of life. We take for granted uh, the, our air and our heat and our comfort and God touching our bodies when we pray. And we take for granted all these things. But I want you to know the greatest thing we take for granted of is God's only son going to Calvary for us. Amen. Paying our sin debt. Amen. Being the one that paid my sin. And all I have to do is repent and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me and help me. Put a new heart within me. Write my name. Amen. That song says, I promised the Lord I'd make him a soldier if he wrote my name. Amen. I promised the Lord I'd make him a soldier if he wrote my name. God help us. If he's written your name, you need to be faithful yes. to fulfill the heartbeat and the plan of God. Not just be satisfied to just have so and so be pleased with you. But be satisfied when you know you've done all things to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Pleasing to the Lord to the best of your ability and being faithful to serve Him and seek Him and be open to Him. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Are you here today and you need special prayer? You see maybe in your own life areas of compromise or maybe in your own life there's, there's a lack of yieldedness to God that you want to be better and you want God to use you more. I want you to know God is the only one that can take the heart of your loved one and let them have enough hunger to overlook the weaknesses of man. All right. Very seldom do you talk to somebody out on the street and really if they give you a few minutes to witness to them, very seldom if they open up and really share with you, few of them have not been hurt. Those that have had an experience with God in the past, you can tell some of them know. Some of them have come to our services. There was a young man that sat on this second row right here just in the last six, eight, ten months or so. And when I went to talk to him after church, he had nothing but a, an argument. And he had been there and done it, and he was wounded. He had been hurt. You know why he was hurt? Because he looked at man instead of the God-man. He looked at man and let man disappoint him and failed to repent and take it to God yes. and ask God to help him. <clears throat> now I'm telling you, it don't matter if it's your ex, it don't matter if it's your dad, it don't matter if it's your brother, your sister, it don't matter who has hurt you. Don't matter how vile and wicked they are. God wants you to pray somehow until you have a genuine godly love for them right. yes. and for God to somehow in his wrath have mercy upon them. Oh God have mercy on them. Don't let them wind up in hell. Thank you for loving me Lord but help me to love others the way I need to. Not cater to their sin. Not indulge in the pleasures of the flesh but fight the good fight of faith and do it God's way. 
Amen. Amen. Anybody needs special prayer this morning? Amen. There's something you need God to do in your heart and life, and you just know He can do it. Amen. Why don't we stand this morning? Let's just ask God to have His way in each heart. And we want the love of God to be accomplished in each of us. We want to go outside these four walls and realize God didn't save us just to feel good and be comfortable. God saved us to be salt and to be light out in the world and to help heal people, to help minister to people and comfort people and make their lives some better. Amen. And really the only way we can make their lives better is share Jesus with them and obey what God is wanting us to do. If they're hungry, feed them. If they need clothing, try to clothe them. But I want you to know their greatest need is spiritual. It's spiritual. Amen. I want those of you that will to just reach over to those that are beside you, maybe behind you, maybe in front of you, and just lay your hand upon one another. Maybe just touch their hand or whatever. Let's ask God to minister today.